Yo, what's going on YouTube? It is your boy GZTV back with another video and today we are going to be talking about an absolute classic. The 2004 action horror film directed by Zack Snyder in his directorial debut. I mean, the rest is history for that guy. He's made iconic movie after iconic movie. There's uh, also a screenplay by James Gunn. It's just a crazy duo. There's all sorts of dope actors and actresses in here. You get Mackay Pfeiffer, um, Sarah Pauly, good stuff here. So, yeah, we're just going to talk about the plot, what happened. This is an iconic zombie flick. I mean, it really revolutionized that kind of post-apocalyptic genre. So I'm really hyped to get into it. Let's go. So here's the plot, you know, after finishing a long shift as a nurse, Anna returns to her suburban neighborhood and her husband, Luis. Louis, Louise, whatever you call him. It's, it's, it's like an ordinary thing. Like, it's a normal life. You know, people do stuff like this, obviously. So, caught up in a scheduled date night, they unintentionally ignore an emergency news bulletin that, like, showering together, having sex, you know, having a good time, having a romantic night. But, uh, there's this emergency news thing. Something has come up. Um, the next morning, a neighborhood girl, Vivian, enters their bedroom and kills Luis, who immediately reanimates as a zombie and attacks Anna. So, I, I watched The Walking Dead before this, which is kind of crazy, because this really set the forefront for zombie stuff, but... A lot of stuff in this film is obviously reminiscent. I, I, don't, I, I can't say reminiscent because this came before The Walking Dead. But this was just like the stuff in The Walking Dead. So you can tell The Walking Dead kind of bit the style of this movie. So it, it was really inter it's really interesting to see the comparisons there. I'm obviously not unfamiliar to the zombie fran like the zombie realm of, of film and TV. Because I've seen 10 seasons of it with The Walking Dead as grueling as some of that was. But, uh, yeah, uh, she, f so Anna flees in her car, crashes, and passes out, um, upon walk waking, Anna joins police sergeant Kenneth Hall, electronic salesman Michael, petty criminal Andre, and his pregnant wife Luda, of course the black guy's a criminal, I mean, that was, just, I guess that was acceptable back then to just make the black guy a damn criminal in every movie, that's kind of fucked up, but. We're in a new generation. We don't really accept shit like that anymore. It's, it is what it is. I'm not mad at it, I guess. But So they break into a nearby mall and are attacked by a zombified security guard who scratches Luda. If you get, uh, They know that if you get bitten, you're going to turn into a zombie. But the crazy part is if you get scratched and like their germs get inside you, it makes sense. But you're going to be infected. So yeah, really interesting stuff. So obviously over time, she's going to continue to deteriorate physically. Again, it's like The Walking Dead, like what happened to them. The Walking Dead takes a lot of stuff from this film, so... It's pretty much like The Walking Dead, but it's like a feature film, so... Yeah. Um, three living guards, CJ, Bart, and Terry, make them surrender their weapons in exchange for refuge so they can stay there. They split into groups to secure them all. On the roof, they see another survivor, Andy, who is stranded in his gun store across the zombie-infested parking lot. I mean, how... How convenient is that, that they have a gun store right across the street? That'd be nice. That's pretty resourceful. Uh, as Andy points out, the group notices a military helicopter flying over the region and attempts to get the pilot's attention. But to no avail, and this is kind of an interesting situation because these pilots and soldiers and all that aren't wanting to help anyone because they don't know if they're infected or not. And they need these soldier, as many soldiers to stay alive as possible. So they can't just bond with people until they know for sure that no one's been bitten but uh the next day a delivery truck carrying more survivors enters the lot pursued by zombies pretty much lures a bunch of zombies there which kind of sucks but i mean the more strength and numbers man it, they get more numbers which is great um cj and bart wish to turn them away but are overruled and disarmed people do not like these guys so they just get locked away and now the whole group kind of has a democracy handles the decisions the newcomers include Norma, Steve Marcus, Tucker, Monica, uh, Glenn, Frank, and his daughter, Nicole. Another woman is too ill to walk. She is wheeled inside via wheelbarrow only to die and reanimate. Again, if you even get any germs inside your body, you're going to turn into one of these things. And I keep reminding people of that because this is just for people who haven't watched my Walking Dead series reviews. So, um... Let's see. Okay, so after she is killed, the group determines the disease is passed by bites, so they kind of come to a revelation, a realization. 
Uh, Andre leaves to see Luda, who has kept her scratch hidden from the group so she can survive as long as possible. Uh, they realize that Frank has been bitten as a, and is a potential threat. After some debate, Frank elects to be isolated. When he dies and turns, Kenneth shoots him. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of dumb to wait till they turn because you got to put them out of their misery first. You don't even want them. I think that was kind of the mentality with The Walking Dead as well. I'm going to bring that up plenty of times. I'm so sorry. Maybe I shouldn't say that anymore because it's dumb to compare a movie like this to a movie, to an, a series that came out like five years after. But, uh,. Kenneth and Andy start a friendship by way of messages written on a whiteboard. Romance also buds between Anna and Michael and Nicole and Terry. So there's some interesting kind of developments there kind of going on in the background. That is going to make for a more sensible experience, I guess. Uh, when the power goes out, uh, CJ, Bart, Michael, and Kenneth go to the parking garage to activate the emergency generator. They find a friendly dog named Chips and... I think they named him, I guess it said on his collar that he was named Chips, but they worry about a breach. So zombies attack and kill Bart, forcing the others to douse the zombies in gas and set them up blaze. There's some pretty sick action sequences in here for sure. Zack Snyder knows how to do a good action action film. I can't really think of what the other movies he's done. I, I, maybe he's, I think he's done stuff in the DCEU. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's some pretty cool stuff. Obviously, Bart is dead, and just like any normal horror movie, people just kind of die throughout the film. Meanwhile, Luda, it's kind of funny her name's Luda, it reminds me of Ludacris. She's Russian, but tied by, so Luda's tied up by Andre, she gives birth and dies, like, at, right as she's giving birth. And it's not because it's like a miscarriage, it's because of her scratch. So, uh, she reanimates as Norma checks on the couple. Uh, when Norma kills the zombified Luda, Andre snaps. They exchange both gunfire and both are killed. So all three of these in kind of a, the same room together, they all die. So the others arrive to find a zombie baby, which they kill immediately. That's kind of fucking crazy. I think I don't think that's... It seems a little unrealistic. Obviously, the concept of zombies in the first place doesn't seem that realistic. But the idea of a zombified baby is kind of crazy. I kind of like that they went in that direction. Because other things that came after this didn't. So, yeah. Um, let's see. So the group decides to fight their way to the local marina and travel on Steve's yacht to an island on Lake Michigan. And they realize, you know, they can't, they can't just stay here the whole time this apocalypse is happening. Because they're going to die there. They're going to run out of resources and deteriorate slowly. So they reinforce two shuttle buses from the parking garage for their escape. They look kind of badass, so like putting barbed wire on the roof. They're kind of putting like aluminum and a bunch of tin on the sides and like a little scooper on the front. It's pretty cool looking. It's like the killer clowns type of thing. So to rescue Andy, uh, the group straps supplies onto Chip's body and lowers him into the parking lot. The zombies have no interest in him because he's a dog. He doesn't have the same like bloodline as a human. They only want humans' blood, uh, which is a weird kind of stipulation with the disease. Uh, I don't, I don't know. In other zombie things, have we seen animals get bit? I think a horse has gotten bit before, and like a cow maybe. But uh, yeah, Chips enters Andy's store safely, but a zombie follows through the dog door, which is obviously unfortunate. Nicole, fond of Chips, like this this is pretty much her dog now, crashes the delivery truck into the gun store where she is trapped by a zombified Andy who's pounding on the door trying to get it to her. Um, Kenneth, Michael, Tucker, Terry, and CJ reach the gun store via the sewers, kill Andy, and rescue Nicole. They thought she was long gone. And, um, what's his name? Uh, Shane. Is that, was that his name? Steve. Fuck. Steve was kind of a dickhead. I mean, his character just kind of set up to be an asshole. Um, but yeah. Just to describe a couple of the characters, I mean, Kenneth is more like the macho man, like the, girl, I'm strong as fuck type. But, uh, yeah. So, the group grabs ammunition and go back to the mall. Along the way, Tucker breaks his legs and CJ shoots him out of mercy. Which kind of fucked up. I I, I guess they knew he was going to be eaten or something. I... <coughs> so, once inside, they're able to lock the door and force an evacuation via the buses. So, while the vet navigating through the city, Glenn loses control of a chainsaw, accidentally killing himself and Monica. Blood splatters on the windshield, causing their bus to crash. It's a crazy turn of events. This is a crazy, like, plot thing that this movie decided to go with. 
accidentally killing someone with a chainsaw because you lost control of it. That's like a final destination type of thing, which is insane, you know? Um, I guess people at this time were trying to find, you know, creative ways to execute deaths, but... While CJ, Kenneth, and Terry look for survivors, Anna kills the zombified Steve and retrieves his boat keys. So he dies. They were low-key happy he died because he was hindering the group a little bit. Wasn't really doing much to help. He's like, I'm the captain of the ship. Why would I help you? Like, that's just such an irrational thing. I don't know. Uh, but at the arena, CJ sacrifices himself so the others can escape. Good man. He turns out to be a good man at the end of the day after being a hated character at the beginning. So... Michael reveals a bite wound, killing himself as Anna, Kenneth, Nicole, Terry, and Chips flee on the yacht. Um, there's some pretty cool, like, post credit stuff with, like, the camcorder, you know, footage from it found on the boat shows Steve's escapades before the outbreak and concludes as the group runs out of supplies, approaches an island, and is attacked by a swarm of zombies. The camcorder drops, leaving their fate unknown. That's kind of where the movie ends off. I kind of got to wrap this up because, my goodness, this is going to be a long video. But uh, it's really interesting. It's an interesting end of the film. I, th I would say they all died. I mean, it'd be cool to see a sequel of this, maybe. Well, I, I think this is better executed, and uh, well, I can say The Walking Dead is better, but definitely, I, I don't know. There's definitely something to that, you know, having a TV series. I think the show, the concept needs a chance to breathe, which is why The Walking Dead did things so well. But let's get into the review. So, when we talk about reviews, obviously there is an original review and a retrospective review. I think we're just going to talk about people, you know, looking back on the movie and what they think. So, I mean, there's definitely a little bit of dissatisfaction with this movie and how it ends. But, um, I mean, the remake, if they do a, I don't know if they did a remake, but it could be a good action film. I think they were planning on doing it. I don't even know if they ever did it. Uh, they probably did. I'm sure they milked this movie for all it was worth. But, um... I don't know. Uh, the, the remake could be a good action film. I mean, it was aim... Some of this movie was aimless. Kind of felt like a video game, uh, for that matter. Um, there's not really anything terrifying about it, obviously. But that's because I'm kind of immune to this thing. I've seen uh, things like this before. Um, but, uh, nonetheless, I think this is one of Zack Snyder's better movies. Um, 15 years... Or, you know, like, looking back on it, Dawn of the Dead completely holds up. The film's flaws are mostly at the character level. Some of these characters aren't fully developed, which is the problem with a lot of movies of this genre. Uh, though having a dumb zombie baby and a few under undeveloped red shirts in the mix is hardly a deal-breaker, the action, particularly the opening scene and propane explosion climax, was insane. In addition to the fantastic special effects makeup, the brief flirtation with found footage, and the reverence for its source text while introducing something new, makes this film one of the best. This is a remake of an original film, actually. Never mind. I don't know what I'm saying. So people are kind of comparing this to the old film. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of lists that this appears on when you're talking about zombie films. This is one of the most iconic. So. Yeah, uh, it's 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 a really good horror film just for the for its time as well. Honestly, um, yeah, it's pretty dope. There's some pretty scary opening scenes. Or the, this opening scene is pretty iconic. Obviously, like how it opens. It's a pretty solid remake. It's a pretty essential again for the zombie genre. It's pretty memorable too. Uh, you're definitely not going to forget this experience. Um, I mean, this this movie helped revitalize the zombie genre, you know, with along with movies like 28 Days Later, which we've watched before. Um, you know, at a time when the United States was ripe for the reemergence of zombie movies following the September 11 attacts, which I, I you can have you can kind of contribute to Americans' increased fear of biological weapons, fervent mass military militarization, and the burrowing question of who exactly are the people we call our neighbors. So, you know, at a time of like 9-11, I think it's appropriate to kind of make a movie like this with some social commentary in it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is Snyder's like subtext, text, uh, conveying the horrors induced by terrorist attacks. You know, there's parallels between the zombie apocalypse and a post-9-11 America here. Uh, it's a ge genius perfected in terms of its standing in a zombie genre. Um... They're, it's pretty good. I mean, it's an influence upon, you know, the stuff like Night of the Living Dead and, you know, everything kind of ties them together. 
like kind of trying to Busan series, you know, you get a lot of different zombie flicks out of this zombie land, I think dropped after this possibly. Obviously the original Dawn of the Dead was just the OG, but this is the remake of an OG, so it's obviously super important for horror fans. I don't really have much to say, I think it's pretty solid. Um, yeah, it's one of the better horror movies of that year, I would say, just because it was iconic. People were looking forward to a remake. I don't know how good the original is. I'm sure it's aged. I'm sure it's old as hell. But uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be listening to Schoolboy Q. We're going to post a video on the channel Friday, February 30th. And then obviously, NBA recaps are going to be coming as always. Anytime there's good games during the week, I'm out, guys.